Okay, welcome back to my let's play of Orwell on the PC. To recap the story so far, uh, there was a terrorist bombing at a public plaza that left, I want to say three dead, but somewhere around there. Not a, not a huge number of people. And uh, our only suspect at the start was a woman named Cassandra Watergate, uh, daughter of some pharmaceutical entrepreneurs uh, turned activist. And she had some connections to a rather interesting activist group called Thought. And uh, she admitted... Uh, to assaulting a police officer at the same location a couple of years ago, uh, which originally she was let off because of lack of evidence, but since Big Brother was watching her chats, she admitted to doing it. So we got her arrested, which is good, but it does not seem that she is the main culprit because right after she was arrested, there was a second bombing. This one took place at a university, Stelligan University, with at least two people dead and three injured. Um, once again, there was a letter received, so just like the first place, with uh, the first three stanzas of a German folk song. The thoughts are free, which is connected to supposedly the leader of the thought activist group, Goldfels. So that's what we're working on now. He is our, our main suspect right now. And we don't know anything about him, so we're working on that. Okay, so here is her new arrest record uh, from today, I guess. Redacted. Redacted. Arrested in her flat, she willingly opened the door and cooperated with the arresting officer after having the warrant announced and her rights read to her. Okay. All right, connections between Bonton bombings evident. The bombing that occurred yesterday at Stelligan University seems to be connected to the attack against the Freedom Plaza earlier this week. This is the conclusion of the police division who is investigating the cases. In both assaults, a similar explosive device created with pure malevolence appeared to have been used, police spokeswoman Steele said. The letters received prior to the assault seem to support this suspicion, while their meaning is still puzzling investigators. According to rumors, people have been theorizing the number of stanzas might represent the number of bombings, which in turn raises the question whether there might be another bombing yet to occur. Meanwhile, Stelligan University has declared that normal operation cannot continue under the circumstances, so they will be closing their doors for the time being. The university has also put up a special front page, Show to pay their respects to the assault's victims. Now, I guess the question we would have is why would they bomb a university? This is a group that is all about freedom and anti-government, things like that. So what do they have against a university? That's the question. Um, uh, the Davenport siblings, owners of the biggest social network timelines, announced major cooperation with software giant Rosen Technologies. Hmm. By utilizing the existing infrastructure and software development capacities of Rosen Tech, Timelines will be able to respond to the needs and requirements of the quickly changing digital world in real time. Our growing user base will profit from this by significantly reduced downtimes, tightened security, and a sped up integration of new features. Sure they will. Okay, and heavy rainstorms expected for the weekend. I don't know if I care about that. All right. 
Goldfells. We got our picture. Done and done. Not much else to say about that. And here we go with the thoughts are free. The letter. We are right, it seems. He immigrated in the nation in 1993. From Germany, yeah, I guess that makes sense. An immigrant, hmm. Mmm, immigrant, mmm, yeah. And he created the blog called The Thought. Or Thought. The Thought, an activist group with the same name as this blog. If Goldfells is the one who created the blog, perhaps he founded or even was the leader of the activist group. Perhaps. Okay, we have a entry published in July 2016, so that's right around the time of uh, that big protest at the plaza. And he says here, after one and a half years recruiting two of my students and arranging three demonstrations like the one held at Freedom Plaza. Okay, so three demonstrations. Um... <sighs> uh, so the question is, does he have a fascination with the number three? And that means there's going to be a third bombing. And also he recruited two of his students, suggesting that he is perhaps a teacher or professor. In three demonstrations, more interesting might be that two students seem to be involved. Uh, here it says he resigned from active engagement. Whatever active engagement means, still an interesting fact. And he had students at Stelligan. Interesting. What? Now Stelligan? The same Stelligan where a bomb just exploded? You know what I think about coincidences. I won't repeat it. So far, the evidence suggests that Goldfels was a prominent lecturer at Stelligan, and some of his students became involved in thought. Did he, like, recruit them for his cause? We need to identify those students, see who else is involved with the group. Okay, so we gotta find out what he taught and where and what was he doing. But we have some conflicting uh, data chunks here. We let ourselves be consumed by anger and hatred towards those we thought to do us wrong. So he's discussing uh, how the, the group has changed since they started. Or, I now see my high aims might well be the cause for all the events of the past months. More than anyone else have thought, I feel responsible. So does he feel responsible? Or not. I'm going to go with yes. Although, he is a terrorist. A troubled past. We'll have to get to the bottom of this. Alright, we have the memorial site for Stelligan. Oh, it killed a student as well as a lecturer. Hmm. New headline. First suspect in connection with assault arrested. This would be Cassandra. A couple of minutes ago, the Bonton Police Department reported that an arrest in connection with the recent bombings in the capital has been made. A young woman has been brought into custody thanks to investigation efforts of a special task force. Okay. See, I'm making headlines with my work. Notable alumni. Here we go. Catherine Delacroix, she's the head of the security. Joseph Langley, he's a alumni. And this woman, hmm. Ah, here we go. 
Professor A. Goldfels taught media ethics. Abraham Goldfels. Yep, Abraham it is. Well done. And he taught media ethics, but retired in fall 2016. Did you notice the bombing location seemed to be closely connected to Thought members? There could be a pattern emerging. Thought has held three demonstrations, yet there have only been two bombings, which might imply... Well, it's definitely a shot in the dark, but we absolutely need to do everything we can to prevent another attack. Take a close look at the past of each member with Thought. Find out the locations of all demos they have held. That might yield a hint. Okay, he was a journalist at Der Reporter, one of the most renowned German daily newspapers. That's good to know. He was also a chairman of the Global Media Ethics Congress. Member of an ethical congress. Just the average run-of-the-mill terrorist trait. Yeah. And he wrote a book in 2014 titled... Die Gedanken sind frei, a modern time declaration of independence towards mass surveillance. Not a coincidence. Well, what do you say to that? He literally wrote the book. Wow, it's a whole lot of information about this Goldfels. Yet only one other page can be indexed. Very strange indeed. I think the next course of action should be to look for other people of this thought group, like the students he mentioned. Yeah. Eternal Stelligan University class attendee system. Okay. So we want... Um, maybe winter? 2015? Abraham Goldfels. Uh, Alright, so we got... He's going to recruit his star students, right? Oh, oral exam. There you go. Bonnie. <laughs> Um, I don't know if that means anything. Oh, and then uh, Blanca, she failed the exam twice and then suddenly pulled out an A. Hmm. She must have really studied hard after failing twice. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's go with uh, summer 2016. Goldfells. Sandra Costa was a guest. Why would it record that? I guess. Ah, here we go. Juliet Carrington. Master thesis registered at this course. We've seen this name before, haven't we? Right, she was a friend of Miss Watergate. Now it also appears that she was a student of Abraham Goldfels. I think that's enough to warrant a report. Give me a few minutes. All right, we have authorization to investigate Miss Carrington. Excellent. Excellent! Let's look at her Facebook. If you're just listening hard enough, you can hear the people sing. Uh-huh. Okay, so she's a PR assistant at Rosen Tech. Interesting, interesting. Born February 92. She lives in uh, Farview. She likes, uh, she likes board games. She better like Cosmic Encounter. That's all I can say. She also likes the Targets. Cafe Chestnut. Oh my god, what is this horror show going on here? What is this? So... <clears throat> hmm... This is all just not... What? You know, I'm not so keen on going out late night. Dislikes going out. Okay, I don't know how relevant that is. 
Well, we know she's friend with Cassandra. That's how we got here. Oh, torture. Is this, is that correct? What? Wow. And there's only underlines her assessment as potentially dangerous from yesterday. Hmm. Okay. What? What? Why? Why? What? what? Tor torture? I mean, she's clearly engaged in torture. She's clearly joking. What? That guy just... He's like, what? Tor she's tortured? What? Like, he doesn't understand, like... Jokes and... Is this guy Drax? Like, what? what is going on? Okay, we are the Carringtons. Welcome to our website. What the... Why do you have a website? It's like some GeoCities... 1998 nonsense going on here that you make a website for your family. <laughs> Favorite book or movie? Labyrinth. Okay. Favorite food? Mashed potatoes. Oh my god. <laughs> How boring in life do you have to be to have your favorite food be mashed potatoes now i know i've talked in the past where i really enjoy combining meat with mashed potatoes but you see that's like a duology that there you know there's a combination there your favorite food just being mashed potatoes it's just <laughs> i don't know what to say okay so this woman is the headmistress at Farview Elementary. This woman is the CEO and founder of My Cloth Limited, which I don't even know what that is. Um, oh, it's a clothing startup, well known, with more than a dozen employees. Holy shit. June Carrington is chief engineer at Bonton Machine Works. Favorite movie, Back to the Future 2? Wow. I don't think you meet too many people that prefer the second one to the first one. Favorite color, Ultramarine. Nice. That's awesome. Uh, here we have Juliet Carrington. We have a specific birthday. We can update that. Uh, PR assistant. Favorite food. Banana nut muffins. That could be relevant. Could be relevant. Yum. Yum, he says. If we fail to prevent the next assault due to you processing random data, I won't be taking the fall. Hey, could be relevant, you asshole. Just like her favorite color being red. I like to joke as much as the next person, but her favorite color, do you really think that is pertinent information right now? There's an active bomb threat right now. Could you please focus on that? It could be relevant. Parents, Jonathan and Esther. 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 Uh, play the guitar. Play, play, I don't know. Is it relevant? Is it? Is she just going to ridicule me again? Maybe it's relevant. Okay. So we have a data chunk here that she decided to end her band career once she was single again. Um, but it conflicts with something we haven't seen yet. Focused on her studies of media economy. Okay, so she majored in media economy, which I don't know what that is. But all right. Now, Rose in Tech. Victor Rosen. Ten Commandments. Okay, yeah, I'm sure that's all real legitimate. Rami French, head of vision shaping. Oh my god, he's gonna, he's gonna shape your vision. Maria Harper, head of PR. Juliet Carrington, and we have a phone number, baby. Big brother, 
Good work. The listener will also track incoming and outgoing telephone calls of numbers you've added. Yes. Hold on, we got a session with Yosef, her lawyer. This is happening right now. He's messaging her. He has no knowledge that she's been arrested, which means she wasn't allowed to contact her lawyer. And he hasn't checked the news. I mean, she's probably already been black bagged. She's, she's long dead. This is a big brother dystopian society. She is, she is gone. Um, but okay. Now we have a call from, uh, between Juliet and her mother. Can't take personal calls while I'm at work. While I'm at work, I just wanted to check in. Make sure you're home for dinner tonight. Oh, so she lives at home. She's now to find her parents' address. Oh, I thought she didn't like going out. It's Friday and Miss Carrington has plans to go out tonight in Boston. That information would normally be innocuous, but we know that she actively dislikes going out. People are truly creatures of habit. Maybe she really does want to go out, but this seems a little odd. What is she really doing? <laughs> That's right. If you ever say on the internet that you don't like going out, and then you do go out, you are up to no good. Okay. Mother says to avoid public places, another bombing. Juliet says we can't give up our freedom like that. I can't just sit at home with you every night of the week. You won't have much freedom left if you're dead. Mm -hmm. This ridiculous group has gotten you into nothing but trouble. What were they called? What were they called? Okay, so she's still, she is in thought, definitely. I really have to go now if I don't want Victor Rosen to personally fire me. Okay, probably not too relevant, but yeah, it's her boss. Okay done interesting okay all right so we have uh this i'll we'll have to look into that uh get in touch what else was relevant here what is it what does it want me to find? Oh, is it just the picture? Because oh, you always have to replace the picture. <sighs> like, you know, I, I don't really, I don't really care. Uh, okay. Well, you know what, screw it. I'm putting down her favorite book is To Kill a Mockingbird. You can't stop me, boss. You never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view. Until you climb inside of his skin and walk around in it. Harper Lee's Kill a Mockingbird. I actually read that one. Great book. Okay. He didn't question that too much. Okay. Let's see here. We didn't finish going down our Facebook. Only one week left until I have to enter my thesis at Abraham's course, and then it's goodbye, Stelligan. Now, she refers to a professor by his first name, which is pretty interesting. It drives me outright mad, even though Cassandra and I just got to know each other at the protest at Freedom Plaza. Okay, so they met through the protest...
Okay, this doesn't sound like the Juliet I know. You wouldn't even accept the duty of being the class representative when you were appointed. How come you care so much about politics now? Because she's banging her professor. And he's real interested. First Miss Watergate and now her. Is there some sort of brainwashing going on? Oh yeah, there's some, there's some kind of washing going on, I'll tell you that much. Uh, okay, now there's still something relevant. <coughs> oh, sorry. There's still something relevant in here. Um, he... Hmm. Okay, so what, he only taught for two semesters? Whoop, Harrison O'Donnell. Where did we hear this name? Wrong profile, hold on. Hold on. Harrison O'Donnell, yes, we've seen that name connected to Miss Watergate. I'll report this right away. We've been authorized to consider Harrison O'Donnell a target person. Now there's some more work for you, congrats. Harrison and Juliet, those must be Abraham Goldfell's students within the thought. Well done. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. So he's a friend of both of them. It says he's a media punk. Media punk, what does that even mean? I don't know. But he likes the targets, like everybody. Everybody in this world likes the targets. They are the most popular band on the planet. We have something to hide then, Mr. O'Donnell. Oh, good fucking riddance. What did he say? What is he doing? Okay, so he's clearly talking about Cassandra being arrested because of the protest. So he said a bunch of shit, and then he deleted a bunch of shit. And here we have... A picture of Harrison and Juliet on stage... And they're called, he refers to them as a couple. Uh, okay, so what's the conflict here? How is that a con- Oh, the conflict is whether she's still in a relationship or whether she's single. Since this was posted like a year ago, uh, and this says she ended her band career when she was single again, I'm going to go with this. So let's pop on over to Juliet, put her down as single. We finally get to hear about the targets. So this is Harrison's band. I guess that makes sense. It's quite an ego we've got there, haven't we? We are the track you are ashamed of in your fine-tuned playlist. Okay, I have a lot of those, but okay. The unexplainable gap in your seemingly flawless CV, your drunken selfie in your timeline's profile, the porn movie found on your work computer. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, okay. Now this is former members talking about Juliet Tubman. That was her alias? Tub man? Oh my god, what girl would accept that? What? OK. 
Okay. Okay, they cancel the show April 19th at the Haunted House. A friend of mine claims to have heard that Hancock decided to quit the band. But no official statement has been given out. Okay, now that's a wild, unconfirmed rumor. But if it's on the internet, it's gotta be true. Which would explain then why they would cancel the show. But they would also cancel the show if he knew that there was going to be a bomb there. Or would he? I don't know. Um, you know, for me, for me, I feel like when I listen to music, the thing that matters really almost more than anything is the lyrics. As in, I need to be able to understand the lyrics. Like, I like very few songs that I can't sing along to in some way. So, anything that's sort of screaming or just, like, unintelligible and it's just, like, you're supposed to just feel the rhythm of the music, like, I don't care for any of that. So, that sort of stuff right there. Nah. Oh, we got an email for Hancock, the media punk at mailerate.tna. TNA. Excellent. You'll now have access to any emails coming in or out of this account. Yes! Alright, we have a chat session between Cassandra and Juliet. Here we go. Cassandra's arrested right now. Ho ho ho! Yosef is on Cassandra's account. Not too uncommon in a relationship, is it? Uh, I would, I don't know, sure. Okay. If either one of them, well, I guess Cassandra's name was not mentioned in the news. So the only way that he would know is because she gets to give a call to her lawyer. So she either wasn't given a call, which, as far as, as, far as I understand, it's not actually like a right. Like you don't actually have a right to a phone call to anyone when you're arrested. I think I remember reading that. Private is my default setting. After all, I am a lawyer. Ha ha, Cassie told me you were funny. What? That was a joke? Oh, I can update Cassandra's profile to say she's a lawyer. Oh. isn't really answering anything oh here we go you two were in this thought group together right you both went to the freedom plaza protest so i thought maybe you'd know other places that could be important for her or the two of you where she could be at uh oh here we go 
Yosef, I'm sorry. Freedom Plaza was organized by thought. Yeah, but Harrison did all the planning for it. Harrison did all the planning. And that's conflicting with some other piece of information. Presumably in relation to Goldfells. Okay. Now here's an email from a flower company to Harrison. Uh, he ordered a bouquet, lovely, with tag to Angela. And we have his bank account. Oh yeah, drain that shit dry. All right, so she's involved with someone named Angela. I don't know if it's super relevant, but there you go. And snag his bank account. Holy shit. Holy shit. Okay. Let me just double check here. Oh, we've got a new picture for Abraham, so let's put it in there. Nice. Very suave. Um, <coughs> what do they want me to grab from here? Ah. Okay. Juliet lives in Malloy Court Farview, according to this. If we accept that she lives with her parents and they still live... Yeah, they still inhabit to the day. Perfect. Funny, this is right around the corner from where I live. Oh, you terrorist fuck. Um, there's still... Oh, the portrait. God, fine. Always with the portraits. Okay, so this Mike guy said, if you've got it, flaunt it, and you definitely got it, baby. Makes you look even more awesome. Harrison said, Mike, why don't you go and ask Juliet out right away, huh? No need for hiding anything. I can provide a nose correction just for you to make you look just as awesome. You want that? No? Then off, you fuck. Holy shit. Easily jealous is right. Let's put that down in his permanent record. Okay, first day at Stelligan. He went as a guest, of course. We, we know that, so... Um... <sighs> uh, <coughs> Of course, have another picture of Juliet. <laughs> okay, I really don't think this is relevant to anything, but there you go, there's another picture. What else do they want from me? Oh, here we go. Cassarthus, that is Cassandra, will definitely come to the Freedom Plaza demo. I just have to get to know Juliet, especially since she's the one organizing this. Okay, now here's interesting. According to Cassandra there, Juliet was the one that organized the thing. According to Juliet, Freedom Plaza, Plaza was organized by thought, but Harrison did all the planning. So, <clears throat> is she just trying to deflect and just try to pass the buck? Or are they both technically correct? I mean, what's the difference between organization and planning? I think we'll go with this. He planned this protest that went completely awry? Doesn't sound like very good planning to me. Or maybe it didn't go awry at all. Maybe it went down exactly as he had in mind. 
So that Freedom Plaza demonstration was one of Thought's protests, not immensely surprising. One down, two more protest locations to go. Okay, we've got a call between Juliet and Harrison. Ever since we first made out in that clear night on the Stelligan Greenfield, I knew it was destiny. Oh my god. Ugh. Uh, okay. Talking about the thought page you so generously volunteered to maintain. The fuck is this shit? Okay, so I haven't gotten that far, but apparently something happened to the thought blog. Oh, you bailed out of thought all of a sudden. Thought didn't do shit anymore since Abe disappeared. Whoa, but turning around that way made a damn fine excuse for you to bail out on the two of us, huh? Maybe then because you disgraced Thought before by hiding all the articles on the Thought blog except Cassandra's. Ooh. Abe archived the first ones because he didn't even want us to know. None of us could ever access them. I merely did the same with the rest because that would also be in Abe's interest, and Cass wanted to show her article around. Oh, please. I know you deleted all your rebellious Rebellious post to secure your cozy job writing that ridiculous opinion column for the TNB. You know, it's funny you dare speaking of disgrace when Rosen is the government's personal bitch. In case you didn't know. Almost makes you the same in my book. Okay, wow. They dropped some shit on us. Alright, so Harrison's no longer a member of Thought. Is that so? We still need to keep observing him, though. Uh, Abe disappeared, and Thought just fell apart. We gotta put that in Abe's profile. Abraham Goldfell's disappeared, causing the group to be inactive. They are no longer active? Well, it seems to me like someone still is. Oh, I'm sure it's Abraham. No, it's actually probably not. Okay. We've got... The two of these are former lovers, which I feel like we already knew. Seems that today's new targets have a common history, something more than belonging to thought. Okay. He hit articles on the Thought blog. That is correct. First the timeline, now the Thought blog. You have a lot to hide, Mr. O'Donnell. But Abraham first hid some articles. This gets more confusing by the minute. Why do you hide something on a group's blog from its own members? A hidden agenda, perhaps. Okay, now Harrison writes for the National Beholder, which I'm sure we'll get to read. Hey, I read this one quite I read this one quite regularly. I wasn't at all aware it was our guy. The TNB probably didn't know either. Okay. Now we have an email from an unknown person. Oh my god, we don't even get their email address. To Harrison. Subject, I see you. Knock, knock, Harrison. Seems I caught you pants down on that little page of yours. Confused? Why, that's fine. You don't know me and I like to keep it that way. But I know a lot about you, media punk. If you knew what I know, what you know about what this little group of yours did, you would find it just as hard to ignore that those bombs might just carry your name tag. Get what I'm talking about, right? So the righteous hacker initiate will expose all information I got on you. Might interest the cops, won't it? I have no love for the gov, but I will do what I must, so give me one good reason not to do it and I might reconsider. 
Oh my god, it's the hacker 4chan at it again! <sighs> okay. So... There's a righteous hacker initiate that is blackmailing him. Now there's a hacker involved in all this because the situation wasn't bad enough as it is. I wonder what this is about. Oh, hold on. Okay, and yeah, so... Clearly these hackers are involved with the bombs. Seems we are not the only ones interested in Mr. O'Donnell and his entanglements in all this. I wonder if this guy has any proof for what he claims. Okay, we've got Harrison's reply. Hey, wise ass. This is the most pathetic blackmailing attempt I've read in a long time. I mean, how many do you read? You want a damn good reason not to call the cops? I can give you three. You hacked my site, i.e. my web server. Last time I checked, this was highly illegal. Something about glass houses and stones. Two, I don't get what you want to have found out about me. True, our protest didn't always go as planned, but since you claim to know so much about me, you should know that this was hardly my fault. What I wanted is on my blog. Not a word about fucking bombing people, only grabbing attention. Bet you never even found that, huh? Where are your mad skills, hacker boy? I'll throw you a breadcrumb so you don't feel too miserable. My Nick. <laughs> I, I know he means my nickname, but it's fine, but... <laughs> Three, I'm the wrong person to mess around with. Leave my page alone. Roll it back and then don't dare touching it again. I will get you. Promise. H. Holy shit. Okay. All right. So... Oh my god, we got so much to read. <sighs> okay, First National Bank. This is, this is Harrison's bank account. Oh my gosh. Look, oh my gosh. Look at this. So, he is a very frequent customer. Crustomer. Yeah, he is a crustomer. At the drugstore. Either he values his hygiene or it might as well be material intended to wash away a freedom memorial. Yeah. Okay. He received $3,500 from TNB when he was <laughs> in debt and still buying drugs and stuff to continue to be in debt. So that helped out quite a bit. Must be the payment for writing the opinion column then. All right. And then he has two separate health insurance payments. One that is twice as much as the other. A guy his age planning on doing something dangerous perhaps? Okay. Oh my God, it just keeps going, doesn't it? <laughs> so much to read. Um. So this is an opinion piece written by Harrison, like, a week ago, uh, saying to shut down the border with parges. Safety of any citizen is of utmost importance. That has been the party's premise ever since 2009, and ever since it has been wor ever since it has been working like a charm. Here he's saying he supports the government. Seems pretty unlikely. But isn't the National Beholder like the government newspaper? I mean, well, either way, it's the leading newspaper of the nation. So, yeah, it's owned by the government. Guaranteed. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure he's just told to throw that in. But here we go. Who knows? Maybe next week a bomb will go off in the middle of Farview or Bonton. Hmm. 
yes, I read the article. That was strange indeed. And with the bombings now, yeah, something's up with our boy Harrison here. And his Nick. Okay, well, we got plenty more to read next time. You know, we're solving mysteries. The, uh, the web of, of people is growing, as you can see. But we're going to get there. We're going to get there. <sighs> My name is Bang. Gamey watching has been Orwell, and I'll see you fine folks in the next part.